Hello, my name is Alison Brown. I am a reader in criminal history and I'm also associate head of the English and History Department at Edge Hill University. Um, and as I said, my main area, my main research interest is criminal history and even more specifically, penal history. And even within that, the history of the prison. And uh, the reason I'm explaining that in part is because um, one of the things, one of the image that I'm going to talk about is an image that I have obtained through my research. So I'm going to be considering the importance of images as a piece of historical evidence. And as historians, we need to think about a range of historical sources that we can make use of to deal with the often fragmentary nature of historical evidence. It also enables us, you know, if we can draw on a wide range of historical material, also it enables us to interpret history from numerous different perspectives, and that's very important. Historians have quite often tended to rely almost wholly on textual sources, when other kinds of material might very well be available. An important additional kind of material that is available is, of course, the visual images. And we shouldn't really see them as additional to textual, but as one of that broad range of sources that's available for us historians to draw on. But it has to be said that the use of visual images in history, in historiography, has been rather limited. And some people have referred to this as a neglect, as a condescension towards images. And even when they have been used, it's often been to merely illustrate con con conclusions, merely to illustrate conclusions that they've already reached through using textual material, rather than actually examining images in their own right and to arrive at specific conclusions based on those images. But historical interpretation needs us to think critically about the diverse ways that social groups and societies have thought about and made sense of their world, and images are an important part of that. They're an important aspect of what civilizations, societies, groups have produced over time. We shouldn't over-exaggerate this. Some historians have immersed themselves in the analysis of um, images, and we can see examples of this in, for example, the interpretation of Egyptian tomb paintings, in medieval religious art, or in 19th century political prints. And those kind of examples give us, give us an idea of the range of images that are available to historians. So paintings, drawings, engravings, photographs, cartoons. As Peter Burke has suggested, these are sources that allow us to imagine the past more vividly, more imaginatively, more creatively perhaps. But on the other hand, they also are mute witnesses. And it's difficult to translate their testimony because they usually don't supply us with any text, with any words to explain their meaning. So it's vital, as with textual sources, that we understand the context in which these images are produced. I'm going to examine briefly one particular image that I've used in my research. And this is a sketch of a prison riot drawn by a prisoner on prison toilet paper. So in 1932, there was a major prison riot in Dartmoor Prison in Devon, in which the inmates took control of the prison for about an hour and a half. No one was killed during the riot, although there were some injuries, the most serious being of a prisoner who was shot off the roof of a building by a prison officer defending the perimeter of the prison. Inmates set fire to central buildings and there was extensive damage to property. This image only came to light and therefore became a part of history because, one, I had a specific purpose to my research, and that was to produce the first academic study of the Dartmoor riot. Two, because I was interested in a particular perspective, the perspective of those in the prison at the time of the riot. And three, because I asked a particular and quite simple question. What information could I obtain from the descendants of prison officers who were in the prison at the time? I therefore interviewed the daughter of one of those prison officers and she handed to me or, or, uh, the, the original of the sketch and then later made, gave me access to a, a scanned copy of it, a sketch that was handed to her father shortly after the riot. 
Unfortunately, she didn't have much information about it. She knew that it was drawn on toilet paper by a prisoner shortly after the riot, and it was handed to her father because he's named in the sketch, whose name was Officer Trask. So there's no written historical account or explanation of the meaning of the sketch. So that job has largely been left to us. And we have to always remember that we're undertaking that job within a perspective or the perspective of our own social and cultural context. So, for example, within a more um, radical kind of history that's emerged since the 1960s and 70s. So what does this image give us? Well, this image gives us an independent testimony. The content is more considered than most photographs would be, as it's drawn by an inmate, and of course it op offers a particularly valuable perspective, one because it's rare, and one because it's from a person who was in the prison at the time of the riot. So the sketch is a comic rendition of the riot. It's in the midst of the, in the, midst of the riot, and portrays prison officers as afraid and even, and even ridiculous. The convicts are all, it seems, Al Capone lookalikes, and, and the violence and injury is caricatured, so actually it evades the, the whole issue of the harm that actually um, was carried out during the riot. The caricatures of these prisoners would, could have been taken from popular gangster movies of the time, The Public Enemy or Scarface, or even the kind of prototype American movie, The Big House, in which there were scenes of prison rioting. In the sketch, it's a prison officer who falls from a tall building and not an inmate. Officer Trask is named in the speech balloon, and if you remember, he's the officer that is believed to have shot the prisoner off the prison roof, and therefore leading to his partial paralysis. He's still in the speech balloon, but he's there no doubt, and this is our interpretation, that because but precisely because he was the person who shot the prisoner off the roof. So the story's been changed. It's a prison officer falling from the roof, but clearly there's recognition of what did happen in the riot because Officer Trask appears in the cartoon. Prison officers and inmates are firmly on opposing sides. There is no blurring of roles or loyalties, which uh, actually conflicts with other evidence about the riot. And there's a big debate in the evidence about those prisoners who actually helped prison officers. They were referred to as loyal prisoners in the trial which followed the riot. The comic prison, it seems, has been taken over not by dangerous criminals, but by a community of revelling gangsters. This leads us to the question, were there a large number of these criminals in the prison at the time? Well, no. But there is other evidence to suggest that these kinds of offenders were influential in the prison inmate hierarchy and also in the riot. Intriguingly, the sketch could be interpreted as ridiculing the outcome of the official, official investigation into the riot, which placed the blame almost wholly on the small number of what they termed modern criminals, and by that they meant gangsters and motor bandits and smash and grab raiders, those very kind of interwar, that very interwar kind of language that was used. Um, so that uh, it could be seen as ridiculing the outcome of the investigation that, that actually placed the blame almost wholly on those kind of criminals because they were powerful during the riot or perceived to be powerful in the riot, not that they were there in, uh, as a, uh, in uh, large numbers. So there's much more that we could say about this one image. It's a very complex image, it's a rare image. But it's already clear from what I've said that images can be an extremely valuable source to historical research and can offer a real immediacy and a vividness to our understanding of the past.